looking at the toroid, which is the ultimate shape for number transformation, for energy transformation. That's why your, your blood cells are a toroid. This is why everything's based on a toroid, okay? Um, so, thus, that means then you can work on your own transmutations, permeations, okay? That's what this math is about explaining, is how the elements become other elements and how time moves and how cosmology is beginning and is created. What I learned from understanding this is lots of stuff. Okay, let's, let's keep me on what I'm supposed to do. We, we now know this coil is wound in a certain way, okay? But, what keeps this coil together? I found that the emanations shoot out in a spiral that's even going over this whole thing that's even bigger. There's spirals over spirals. Here's the doubling circuits we were out, used to, okay? But, here we have, it's really a beautiful chart. First of all, we see it's going one, nine, one, two going in. Here it's going eight, nine, one. In the reverse direction, it's going out. Um, let's see, two, three, four, five. The pink ones are swirling outwards, so they're decompressing, as the yellow ones swirl inwards, compress. These are nested vortices over the surface of the toroid, like dimples on a golf ball. By their existence, they get rid of crash. It cannot even tilt. There is no tilt in this toroid. It cannot tilt because they're in quadrature. When this two and this two and this two and this family number group's activated and the other eight and five of the same family number group, the other seven and fours are activated and they're all breathing in and out in such a way like dimples on a golf ball or like, I wish I had a better picture, but they're all focused on the center, these nested vortices. Um, that in fact, I do have a good photo picture of it. Nested vortices focused on the center look just like this. Okay? There are vortices focused in the center. Some spiral in and some spiral out. The ones that go in are called a negative vortex or a black hole. The ones that spiral out are called a white hole or positive vortex. Okay? And I figured out how the timing is, how to harness these vortices, these nested vortices. They're very important superconductivity, and that's why I spoke for Airspace America. That's why I have the most advanced flying machine in the world. Okay, that's why I can get rid of petroleum. Because I know the secret. I don't even need an airplane with wings. Okay? Um, staggered column nested vortices have the strongest <coughs> gripping and transit strength. And this is just the opposite of DNA. So when I go to DNA, you'll see just the reverse of this. It's real interesting how this and DNA are connected. Because DNA uses the nested vortices in mitosis to do the sister strand unraveling. See, why don't I show you DNA? See if I can find it. Oh, it's somewhere. Hmm. Well, let's see if it must be on the back. Oh well, I'm going to give up looking for it for a minute. You know where it is? Okay, would anybody care to guess and tell me where the DNA chart is? 
<laughs> yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> there we have it. Right. Here's your double spiral helix. Here's our symbol. Remember our doubling circuits are double. Remember the space for the 396. In microbiology, that's called your major group. Would you believe that DNA has that 396, that flux field, that DNA is bounded by an invisible field, and that that is the source of our genetic coding that determines our evolution, that it isn't random trial and error or haphazard chance? Yeah. We're not going to suddenly devolve. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> but your pinkies make it smaller. <laughs> okay. So, um, Symbolic symbol of enlightenment, that's what I call that symbol. And, and sure enough, it make, you can actually see it if you look inside DNA. You can actually see the shape of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Oh my god. Isn't that trippy? That is so trippy. I think okay. that I've heard they, they already have cracked the genetic, genetic code, right? Say it again? Loud. They have cracked the genetic code, right? I mean. No, no one's cracked the genetic code. They are, are showing the connections of the amino acids, the phosphates, their sequence order. They know nothing of the code. If they knew of the code, then they would be able, or they cannot manipulate the code. All, they, all they're doing right now is like when we mapped the moon 20 years ago. All they're doing is locating where the craters are, where the mountains are, things like that. They, have, they, can, they don't know how to crack the code. But aren't they trying to make cyber people with like all the artificial um, like forms, like there's a thing that the president vetoed against artificial, uh, was it gene splicing? I forget what it is. Well, working on humans, yeah. embryos. But that's, that's typically accepted to be um, inhumane yeah. and ethical and immoral. Yeah, uh, but they're working. But then, you know, if you're not a member of nation, <laughs> just go to your own mad doctor's island, right? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but actually, um, they've already done it. They did it with the tomato. Mm -hmm. Haven't you yeah. ever heard the yeah. tomato yeah. that's a fish? Mm -hmm. no. Yeah. It's so frightening what you're doing. Tomato is a fish? fish. Yeah, yeah, you use the DNA of a fish uh, and the yeah. yeah. DNA of the tomato, so it makes the tomato last longer, apparently. Oh, well, yeah, I heard about that. Is it that they, they use the DNA of the fish to make that happen? They do it with so soybeans. They do it in, they, they have the control of all soybean crops and they do it with soybeans. I don't know what they do with the My brother has one of those tomatoes. He's kept it. It's, it's still there. It has disintegrated. It's really? actually gotten, like, when you pick it up, it feels heavier, he says, than when it when it really was a tomato, and now it's like, it still looks like a tomato, but it hasn't gone rotten. I He's think had it for over two months or something. Really? We should keep it in an aquarium where it belongs. Yeah, <laughs> not eating total vegetarian. It must, it must oh, like... Bones. Yeah, you're total vegetarian? No, but if you were to tell the vegetarian that there was really a fish inside his tomato, then... Well, it already happened, though. The state of New York, all the yeah. gourmet chefs and everything, they signed a uh, agreement amongst themselves that they would never in any of their expensive gourmet restaurants ever serve a uh, genetically engineered with uh, a tomato. But, but all our fruit is already engineered. It's already, I mean, it's, it's out of control. Yeah, I mean, if you look at anything that's, that organic is engineered with um, petroleum, you have petroleum. So it's like, well, actually, I, I'm fighting a case. I'm about to sue a supermarket here, Star Market. I actually was responsible for the law becoming recognized um, because I, I don't eat commercial produce as much as I can avoid it. I like organic, and I don't like those coatings on cucumbers. They make me sick and stuff. It turns out that a lot of that stuff is, you know, dangerous because the waxes are a fundamental, the, a fundamental part of the wax. The wax is just the carrier. The fundamental part, the ingredient of the wax is the fungicides, which are chemicals that are used to actually kill mold and things like that. And these, a lot of these chemicals are called economic poisons. It's been determined that they'll um, kill five people per every million that eat them, which is considered an, an allowable... An, uh, acceptable amount of deaths because of the uh, financial benefit of it. And they say it's an economic, legal economic poison because it would cause economic hardship in the industry, and therefore those five people are simply put expendable. Yeah. Okay. 
And so, um, but the problem is, is we should have the option, the right, especially for what we call value and safety information comparisons to make a decision on what we consume. So when you go in the supermarket, you can have a sign, you may be one of the five uh, people as a victim of the right. <laughs> right, right. And I've read the, I've read the, uh, the uh, autopsy uh, surgeon's reports on people who did die. It's pretty horrific the, how they die. Uh, usually it's anaphylactic shock. They and suffocate. How often does this, like, does it happen? It happens as day in and day out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? Some of them. Just cucumber wax? And the rest of the people just get hmm? sick from it. They don't die. Yeah, but they, they don't get shot with parasites. <laughs> is, he's asking, is it just from cucumber wax? Or is it from other stuff? I don't want to scare you. Mm -hmm. uh, you should be eating fruits and vegetables, and you should be consuming all these things. That fruits and I'm a fruitarian. I don't eat beef, chicken, fish, no milk, no eggs, no dairy, nothing, but just living things, sprouted things, stuff yeah, like that. Like so. Well, it's just, just what you should do is go into the cooler room and read the boxes, you know, and everything in the freezer section at, at, the, at the produce room, it'll say all those ingredients. And I was responsible for getting all those laws enforced properly, and, I, and now I'm responsible for the law that requires that there be a five, that there be a, a huge prominently displayed card, counter card, next to the fruit bins saying the wax, its function, and its origin. Oh. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of these waxes are made from animal products or uh, insect products. Shellac is a result of a Lucifer shellac something type bug. Uh, what, fatty acid esters, which is a wax on uh, apples and tomatoes and cantaloupes, it comes from beef tallow. That's an animal product. Mm -hmm. Religious people, it's not kosher. You know? uh, Islamic people, Jewish people, they don't want to eat this stuff. Um, and this is commercial produce. This is sold in supermarkets. Unfortunately, the supermarkets don't care because nobody ever yeah. has taken them to court on this stuff, and that's why I'm going to do it. It's very hard to prove, too, right? Mm -mm, true, easy to prove. It's, it, there's a law that requires on the boxes that the supermarkets receive that it mentions these chemicals because these chemicals are incompatible with one another. You mix two of the wrong chemicals together, and you die. That happened, like, um, with the Alar on, uh, not, what was it? Remember we had poison watermelons a couple years ago? You just can't take this, mix all these different things together. It becomes a, a poison cocktail. Yeah. So, that, they said, well, we know it's a time bomb, right? We're ready to explode. And there's people with immunology problems that don't even have a resistance to this stuff. They were premature births. So I am, um, but I can't do all the things I'm supposed to be doing. I'm supposed to be doing so much. And that's the problem. Because I'm limited as far as, uh, I have to do everything myself because I don't have the resources. Okay, so um, what we were talking about was, anybody like to make a point right now before I proceed? Are you going to take that? Yeah. That's like a no. sign, right? I mean, um, I was just going to say that that looks also like a, um, a wave of um, sound. Yeah. What you have is that you have the DNA backbone helixes being displaced, just like you said. There's something what? Pushing them apart? Spreading them apart? There is an invisible flux field, okay, that's re responsible for the helical shape. Yeah, he the conical helical shape is a result of a, a result of a higher field. Now, the vortices on DNA, when I added the numbers to it, though, they all lined up. And DNA, are you familiar with how you have sister strand? where they duplicate the information and they're a perfect mirror. That's what our DNA is supposed to be doing. And I found that these nested vortices do that. Now, the nested vortices are right here, which is... Let's look at two nested vortices. Remember the nested vortices? This one and this one. It's 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5 going in. And this one, 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5 is going out. See how this one's a negative one? This is 1, 2, 4 on the bottom. This is a 1, 2, 4 on the top. They're two different types of nested vortices, and this shows it right here. Boy, these charts really do belong together, because that was the goal. See how these are staggered? This toroid is rigid, it holds together. And what does DNA double spiral helix do? It comes apart, based on these two different kinds of nested vortices. How do these nested vortices work and function? Oops. Okay, by how they line up, based upon the shears, the world boundary conditions, which we've been studying, like in the yin and yang and the symbol, where is the boundary condition on the toroid? It's always equal to one. Remember how we did that? One and one is one. Two and five is ten is one. Four and seven is one. Eight and eight is one. See, it's always the same in between. One and one is one. Two and five is ten. It always equals one. 
which is what you said was the yin and yang. Okay? And it really is making one. What it does is it allows you to have wires that